Please welcome our next and final presenter, who has been recognized and published for his great contribution to design. A well-respected architect, he has now dedicated himself to improving the artistic landscape of DFW. He believes that a city's art is its voice. Please welcome architect Greg Ibanez. I was asked the question, why put art in a water treatment plant? Well, let me put it another way. I was actually asked, why put art in a water treatment plant? <laughs> and since that time, which was just last year, I've been thinking about that question a lot. And I'll try to answer that in the next few minutes by telling you about a far-sighted program that my city, Fort Worth, adopted in 2001 that helped our city move forward. It's a public art program that's funded by 2% of capital construction projects, and it aims to create public art that reflects the rich history and diversity of the city, connects its citizens to nature, and provide for interest from tourists. Well, why art? Art is the memory of mankind. Art is the best and most direct evidence for the study and understanding of humanity. Well, art's a big category. We're talking about public art, which is not art in public. These two sculptures are privately owned studio pieces that are simply displayed in public. Uh, one by Damien Hirst, the other by the artist Cause. Uh, you may recognize that piece. It uh, until recently resided at the entry of the Fort Worth Museum of Modern Art in conjunction with its 10th anniversary. Public art is funded with public money. Therefore, it's part of a public process. It's hard. It's a little bit dangerous. One artist described navigating the public art administration process as requiring the eye of a journalist, the ear of a poet, the hide of an armadillo, the serenity of an airline pilot, and the ability to swim. <laughs> and yes, uh, sometimes the results can be controversial. Blue Mustang, which is at the Denver International Airport, is a large piece created by the Texas-born artist Luis Jimenez, who was tragically killed when a portion of the sculpture collapsed upon him during fabrication. Well, whether the piece is haunted by his ghost or not, uh, it's been accused of frightening children, terrifying nervous flyers, and providing a not very hospitable welcome to the city of Denver. But public art is an integral part of the history of cities. And when we think of public art, we often think of those cities that we spend thousands of dollars to visit, like Rome and Paris. And public art takes many forms. One of the most familiar is the monumental bronze, often depicting a heroic figure and located in the center of a grand public space. Public art is often integrated into architecture. In this case, at the Cincinnati Union Terminal, one of the last great train stations of the Art Deco period, the artist Winhold Rice created a plaster and tile mural which depicts the founding mythology of the city. From the same era, but closer to home, is Dallas's Fair Park, which is truly an environment where art and architecture are unified into a whole. 
these two pieces, one titled The Tenor, the other The Contralto, were lost for decades. They were recently recreated as part of the restoration of the Grand Esplanade. Now, looking at them, one can imagine that their, uh, shall we say, anatomical frankness may have caused a little bit of a stir in their day, and I suspect even at the fair now, there's probably a few parents that cover the eyes of their children as they pass by. The most significant installation of public art in the United States of recent vintage is at Millennium Park in Chicago, where literally millions of people go to see and interact with Anish Kapoor's Cloud Gate, or as it's affectionately known, the Bean, and the Crown Fountain by the artist Jaume Plenza. Now, in Fort Worth, we either have in process or have completed 106 projects, and these span the entire city. One of the first was Intimate Apparel and Pearl Earrings by Donald Lipsky, and it's composed of cowboy hats that were donated by Native and a few honorary Texans. It hangs in the Fort Worth Convention Center, and it remains today one of the most popular pieces in the collection. Byers Green is a small triangular pocket park bounded by three streets. And in it, the artist Philippe Kleinfelter created a work titled Earth Fountain. And this piece works at multiple scales. It engages passing motorists, but it also rewards close viewing by pedestrians in the park. This lovely facade at the Southwest Community Center, as you might suspect from the modeled paint on it, was the repeated target of graffiti. The artist Michael Kirby engaged both the neighborhood and the students in creating a Trump Louis mural, which is titled Love Story. And this mural tells the story of a cowboy and a lonely ballerina, along with a colorful cast of supporting characters. And I'm happy to report, since its completion, no more graffiti. The power of art. Even the most mundane piece of highway infrastructure, in this case, a 460-foot tall communications tower can become the platform for meaningful art. Night Song by Connie Aris Mundy and Lara Garanze is a kinetic piece which has a varied program which reflects the seasons, the flora and fauna, and waterways of North Texas. It can be seen for miles, and in fact, the public art staff has received letters from people who pass it daily, and they speak of the joy they get from seeing it in its different forms each time they pass by. One piece that's in process is the Wind Roundabout by the artist Ned Kahn. This is located in the new Henderson Street Roundabout in the Trinity Uptown area, just north of downtown. And this is also a kinetic piece, and it's animated by two things that we have here in Texas, light and wind. This is a piece by the same artist recently completed in Singapore, and the fabric you see is the same as in the Wind Roundabout. And it's composed of thousands of hinged four-inch anodized aluminum squares that are animated by the wind and ambient lighting. We believe this piece will be one of the most talked about and iconic in our collection. OK, about the water treatment plant. Well, 
The city of Fort Worth is justifiably proud of this plan, and we all know the importance of fresh water. And this plant uses cutting edge technology to do its job. Well, the artist Julie Lazarus was inspired by this membrane filtration, as it's called, and she created two pieces for the plant. The first is a tile and gold leaf mural placed at the entry. And the second is a large oil painting in the lobby. And while both these pieces are abstract in nature, the people that work there, they look at them and, and they get it. They, they see part of this process and what they do in this work. In fact, Julie told me that, her voice cracking, that one of the men who, who works in the plant approached her and said, you know, I, I walked by every day, I watched you making this art, and it was so exciting. I, I went home every night and I told my wife, I said, honey, you won't believe how beautiful it is what they're putting in our plant. Well, it was at the dedication for this piece that I was asked that question. Why put art in a water treatment plant? Well, I mumbled an answer about, you know, the significance of water and the transformative power of art. And well, it wasn't very convincing. And I kept thinking about it. It bothered me. And I remembered a trip I took several years earlier to Istanbul. Now, if you go to Istanbul, you can see on the outskirts of the city ruins of aqueducts built during the early Byzantine era. And these aqueducts brought fresh water from the mountains into the heart of the city. And in the heart of the city, you'll find the Basilica Park, which is in front of the great dome church of Hagia Sophia, one of the true architectural landmarks in the world. And in that park, you'll find an entryway underground. And there is a vast series of vaults. It's a cistern. It's where that water was delivered for the city. And if you walk deep into those vaults, you come across something startling. There are two column bases depicting the head of Medusa in two different positions. And historians today still really aren't sure why they're there and what they mean. But whoever saw them? I mean, it was the ancient equivalent of those people working in the West Side Water Treatment Plant that saw them. Well, OK, great. So some might say, oh, you know, I love art. Art's nice. But, you know, it, it, it's not part of the function of, of these things. Well, Charles Eames said, who would say that pleasure is not useful? Isn't that a function? Isn't that a functional requirement of the things we build? So I would say that we should demand that our public realm, the public realm, it's ours, it's what we build, should speak to the greatness of our cities, of our culture, and of our civilization. And I would submit that we should ask our leaders and we should ask ourselves, what will we contribute to the memory of mankind? Thank you.